Well, good morning and welcome to Kitchen and Bath University Online. This is awesome. We're so glad to see everybody. In fact, some of you, I know you're here, but we can't necessarily see you. So if you wouldn't mind going to the bottom of your screen, you'll see a black band and it says video. And if there's a red line through it, that means that we can't see you because your video isn't turned on. So click on that and then we'll get to see you. We're so glad to have you here at Kitchen and Bath University. I don't know about you, but I got a little spring fever, maybe a little cabin fever, but this is the perfect thing to do on a Saturday morning to bring us all together without being, uh, you know, dangerous. And that's what I'm hoping is going to fill that niche for me and for you today. Kitchen and Bath University, first ever online. You're going to see the latest trends. You're going to hear from design experts and you're going to be able to um, actually ask them questions. What? Yeah, we're all broadcasting. I'm broadcasting from my kitchen, as you can see. And Amanda Webb is with us from Ferguson. She's going to be broadcasting from their showroom. And then uh, Jennifer Bailey, I want to get that right, <laughs> is going to be broadcasting from Tile Sensations showroom. And so you're at the end, after the trends, you're going to get to ask questions. Now I want to talk about how to ask questions so that you're comfortable with it when the time comes. You can do this anytime during the chat. All you have to do is um, just, hi everybody. <laughs> All you have to do is click on, look at the bottom bar, click on the chat icon, left click, and a, a screen will pop up. When that little bubble pops up, you can start typing on your keypad and hit enter or return, and that will automatically post a question. So if you want us to ask that for you, just let us know. If you want to ask it yourself, let the moderator know. You are fully muted just so that you know we can't hear you right now, but you can hear us. But we want to see you, so let's practice the chat. Um, uh, practice the chat thing. So go to the chat screen and type in the city that you're joining us from. Let's see. Let's see who's here. Unmute your uh, video if you want us to see you. If not, that's fine. But go ahead and type us. Oh, our moderator is from Powell. And let's see. Uh, Lenore City. Amanda's here. <laughs> Sharon Owens is coming from Knoxville. Good morning. Rich is from Knoxville. Barbara is from Kingston. Uh, Missy Wright is from Knoxville. Good morning. Brooke Rayburn is from Hardin Valley. Good morning to you. Oh, it's nice to see everybody. So that's how you ask a question and you can feel free to do that anytime. All right. You know, I, <laughs> I want to tell you the story of how this was born. Uh, because what happened is I was in Zimbabwe on mission trip and started to get some information that we don't normally get in Zimbabwe because we only have power about 30% of the time and it tends to be in the middle of the night. But these things, these warnings were breaking through the news cycle and they were talking about the, the COVID-19 virus. So we started paying attention to them and as it turns out, uh, we got the last flight out of South Africa that came to the United States. So we are very blessed in that area. But when we got here, I realized that I had been in a plane with 500 people. And with all this going on, it didn't feel safe to me to go meet with my partner or our project manager or any of our folks, any of our clients. So I quarantined for two weeks voluntarily. And uh, we began to do Zoom, uh, to do pre-construction meetings, to do initial consultations. Uh, just our weekly production meetings, all were happening online. And with the Kitchen and Bath University coming up and the quarantine in place or the, the safer at home in place, we really had to um, go ahead and figure out something else. So Zoom was working so well, and we're glad to have you here adapting with us. Our pivot was for you, and we hope you're going to enjoy yourself today. 
Uh, finally, I want to let you know that uh, we all brought door prizes for you and they are going to be given out at the end of our presentation to you. So stick around because these are worth anywhere from $50 to $250. There's over $1,000 worth of door prizes going out today and we're really excited about that. So sit back, refresh your coffee and join us. Amanda Webb is our first presenter. Amanda is in the Ferguson showroom and we're delighted to have you here. Good morning. How is everyone? Um, like I said, I'm Amanda Webb Furlow. I'm in the Ferguson showroom. So I'm going to walk you guys through different design trends that we are seeing, five different design styles and how you would piece those together. I'll also give you examples of different design styles that we've done here in Knoxville that would meet um, the five different styles that I'm going to put together for you. Um, I feel like the biggest problem with consumers now is they don't know how to pull everything together. So that is why we here we are here to assist you and to help you maintain your dream home and to create that for you. Um, so I'll start by walking you guys through the trends we're seeing. I'll walk around the showroom, show you the different products. So I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen now. Um, and let me know if you guys can see this. All right, perfect. Okay, so the different design trends that we are seeing in the industry right now um, is going to be natural elements. So this is anywhere from lighting, this is into furniture, this is in bathroom vanities as well. Um, it's a very popular trend right now. Pops of color and that fusion interior are very big right now. I think it's great. It's Fun. It brings a lot of life um, into your home. And then also metallic. So, you know, everyone knows gold is coming back. And like I mentioned, um, if you guys were on the radio show, that rose gold and like that polished gold is coming back um, and adding a metallic to the home, which is a great glam look. Um, also connectivity. I touched on this as well. So everything being connected from your shower to um, you know, your lighting fixtures to your appliances to obtain that smart home. Um, so those are the design trends we're seeing. And also matte black. Everyone knows matte black is huge right now. Um, and it's great. I love it. I hope this trend stays. I think it's simple. Um, it's a bold statement and I'm really liking it. Um, the different design styles I'm going to go through today, I'll go through the first one and then I'll show you all the pieces after. That. So the first design trend I'm going to go through is industrial design. Um, so what industrial design is, it's neutral hues, materials that focus on a lot of texture, and it's a bold statement. Um, so the first thing I'll show you guys, and I'm going to get up and walk around the showroom. So tell me if I'm lagging or anything. So the first thing I'm going to show you is a kitchen faucet that would fit into that industrial feel. Um, so this faucet is made by Brizo. So this also has a metallic aspect to it as well. So these are trends that we are seeing through every style. So this is gorgeous. Like I said, it is almost like an art piece in your kitchen. So this would be amazing um, within your kitchen. Um, it wouldn't just disappear. This is going to be a bathroom faucet. So this has this beautiful new antique pewter finish that they're calling black stainless steel or it's a um, luxe steel. So this faucet is great to use in an industrial home to get that aesthetic. So <clears throat> we'll walk through here a little bit. So I did touch on how different ceiling fans were being able to be connected to um, Wi-Fi and to have Bluetooth. So I don't know if you guys can see this um, the ceiling fan right here. The one with the light on and the three blades in the wood. This is the perfect fan for an industrial home. Um, for some reason, every man that comes in here, he wants that fan for his office. It is hysterical. It doesn't matter what type of home it is. He's like, I'm having that fan. And it's the Bluetooth um, speaker in it. So then... Uh, the next thing would be a freestanding tub. Freestanding tubs are a huge trend. This tub is made of solid concrete. Um, it is beautiful. It weighs about 600 pounds. Um, so you might want some extra support. Uh, Native Trails makes that 
tub, but it is incredible when it is installed. Um, it looks amazing in a bathroom. Uh, then I'll go to the light fixture. So this is the Sputnet light, if anyone knows what that is. Um, it's more like a mid-century design, but they have redid them in all different variations. This one has a bunch of um, <laughs> texture to it. So it has an antique metal and it looks great in an industrial setting, okay? All right, I'm gonna go, can you guys see me now? I'm gonna share the next thing. Okay, so this is an example of an industrial um, home in Knoxville. Can you guys see this house? Okay, so this is a good example of the different textures mixed with the metal and the wood. Um, the next one I'm gonna go to is a contemporary um, style. So I'm gonna see, can you guys um, see me now? Are you guys seeing me? Okay, so contemporary style. Um, it's going to be a little bit more on the harsh side sometimes, um, but just to show you that we can accommodate any style here in our showroom, this is a beautiful modern lighting display that we have. Um, and then I'm also going to show you an example of a contemporary kitchen. So when you're getting into contemporary kitchens, I feel like panel and hidden appliances are such a big thing. Um, so if you guys can see behind me, example of the modern kitchen. We have the hidden refrigeration. There's also refrigeration um, drawers within the cabinets. Also, just the overall aesthetic of these appliances. Um, these are Wolf, so they're fabulous appliances. They just have a minimal look to them. Um, also, we have that big commercial range in a modern kitchen. It just doesn't go. As far as plumbing fixtures, and freestanding tubs, I will get to those. Let me pull a few for you. So back to being, you know, adding the metallic in a modern home. So this faucet here, I don't know if you guys can see it really well, but this is called an ombre faucet. I don't know how you can see if it goes from gold all the way to the silver. So this would be a great way to have um, that touch of a metallic in, in a contemporary home. Also, this faucet here would be a great design to put in a contemporary home. Um, Delta makes this, it's called the Pivotal. Let's go to a tub. So typically in a contemporary home, that pop of color would be black. Um, so this tub here is the one that we picked up for a contemporary home. Um, this tub is made by Signature Hardware. It is a company out of uh, Kentucky. They're fabulous. We love using their product. Um, it's also a great price point. So anyone can have this product um, and it's great. Let me see. All right, so let's go to the other one. I'm gonna share my screen again. All right. So here's an example of a contemporary guest bathroom in a home in Teleco Village. So it's just nice and clean. It has a little bit of pop of the black, um, but it's just a great design. I think it's nice and clean. It's not going to ever go out of style, which is nice. Um, it's not too trendy. I feel like that can be a struggle sometimes in design. All right, so Farmhouse Modern. I feel like this one has taken, you know, the design industry by storm. Um, thanks to Joanna Gaines in the HGTV world. Um, so what this is, is Farmhouse Modern is a warmth and simplicity design. It's a mix of contemporary with that vintage inspiration and a lot of wood textures. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so you can go back to me and I can walk around the showroom. <clears throat> so for this, I'm gonna show the difference of, you know, the mixing with the wood and things of that nature. I feel like we put in almost every great room for a farmhouse modern home. It's beautiful. It has that effect. It also serves as a design element. It's not just a fan. Um, and I feel like a lot of ceiling fans are going that way. And then I'll walk over here while I'm talking about lighting. 
Um, we'll go into the goose next. For a farmhouse modern home. The one thing I do love when we are designing a, farm, a farmhouse modern home is the use of copper lanterns with those copper goosenecks. It looks so rich. Um, the copper lanterns that we love to use are made by Coppersmith. So this is a company that does um, custom lanterns for you. So when we place the order, that's when they make them and that's when they get to you. They have um, designs from traditional, like I said, farmhouse, modern, even contemporary, which is great. We really love their product and using them, and they pair so well with that Millennium Gooseneck that's also in copper. Um, also, Closet Tub. Um, they are making a comeback as well. Um, it does come in different colors. You can get these also custom painted. Again, Signature Hardware makes this. They're a fantastic brand. Um, we love them. Also, I'll go while I'm on Signature Hardware, I'll touch on their vanities. So this vanity would be a great piece for us to put in a home. Powder room, a kid's room, it has drawers that you have storage in. It's very functional, which is also important. So these are things that you could pair for a farmhouse modern home. Okay walk back here. Sorry, I'm walking around a lot. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again. Um, okay. okay, so this is an example of a farmhouse modern home that we did. This is actually one of the girls' houses here that works in the showroom, so it turned out beautiful. Um, but it's just a nice mix. It's, like we said, it's warmth and simplicity. Transitional. So this is probably one of my favorite design styles. Um, I, I just think it shows so much freedom of design and a representation of lifestyle. Things that you've accumulated, you know, for your, your whole life. And it's a mix between traditional and modern. It has a very serene environment. Um, so I'll walk through and show you, this is a very nice and clean, timeless look. Um, I think when you walk into a home that's transitional, you just feel so cozy. There's just something about it to me where I really enjoy being in an environment like, like this. Um, all right, so first I'll show you guys, since I'm back at the plumbing, I'll show you some fixtures that I would use for a transitional. All right, can you guys see me again? Okay, so this faucet again is by Signature Hardware. This is in a polished nickel finish. This faucet will never go out of style. It is gorgeous. It is also a fantastic price point too, which makes it even better. Um, especially because polished nickel, I'm sure everyone, I don't know if everyone knows that, I shouldn't say that, is a very expensive finish. Um, this is a faucet that I would use in the kitchen that would be in a transitional home. This also is beautiful. It's crazy how they make faucets now. I mean, they're truly art pieces. As far as lighting um, and having that freestanding tub, I would put something very neutral in there that wasn't too crazy, wasn't too ornate, but just had a nice flare. And I'll show you the tub that I would pick for a transitional home. Again, this is made by Signature Hardware. Um, they're a great brand. We love them. Their tubs are a great price point. They're not over the top, and it's, the quality is unreal. Now, this lighting fixture that I would put um, over a dining room, I know you guys asked me about that on the radio show. I prefer linear fixtures over a rectangle dining room because of the light distribution. This light is by Park Harbor, which is one of my favorite lighting brands to use. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that. It'll back up a little bit. So this just has a, a touch of that metallic. It has mixed metals in it. Um, it would go with any table. It's definitely going to give you enough light. I don't know if you guys can see that. So it's just really elegant. It's beautiful. Um, then I'll walk over here and I'll show you if you wanted to have a chandelier over that beautiful tub. So something like this would be fantastic. I don't know if you guys can see that one right there. This is a nice tub. Mm. Uh, uh, the plane 
very well. I'll show you another guy too. I feel like lighting and trans for transitional homes is a little bit more fun to do sometimes just because you can play with metallics and the shinier finishes and it's not so harsh. So this right here, so Don, this is one of the things when I was talking about like the metallic glass that they've used now that's really popular. So this is like an antique mirror glass integrated in between um, the the design. So when the light is on, the shadow on it is unreal. Mm. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing or I'm going to start sharing my screen again. <laughs> Share. Okay. So this is an example of a transitional home that I designed. Again, this is in Teleco Village. It has that nice stone look. We have the mix, and you can kind of see there on that lighting picture when I'm talking about the shadows that these glasses put off, it's yeah. beautiful. I mean, it's, mm. it's another design element. Um, we did have the mix of the woods um, and the natural elements, so that's also in there too. So all of these trends that I'm going over, they're going into every design style that I am showing you, okay? So my favorite, mid-century modern. Mm. So this is all about, mid-century modern is about very minimal ornamentation. It's about contrast and it's mainly about functionality, okay? Um, mid-century modern now, we have a lot of that contrast between the gold and the black or we have silver and black, okay? Um, so this is a great design. This kitchen I'm about to show you is one of my favorite kitchens in the showroom which is funny when some people walk in, they're like, oh my God, this is the worst kitchen in this place. And I'm like, secretly, I'm like, well, I love it. <laughs> so you just, it's kind of funny just hearing everyone's different opinions on everything. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and show you guys this kitchen I'm talking about. Okay, so this is a cheap We have mixed it with um, an emerald cabinet. So with pops of color, emerald colors are very popular right now. That is the color trends that we are seeing. Um, so GE came out with this product about, I want to say now it's two years ago, and you can actually customize these appliances. So if you wanted to do this refrigerator in black with the gold, you could. If you want to do with it the stainless and gold or just normal stainless or stainless and black stainless, you can do that. Um, so, which makes it really fun because I feel like we've never had that option with appliances before. Um, so, in my opinion, I thought the white and the gold was the biggest pop, and I think it shows really well. Um, so, we'll see how long this trend lasts. We don't know. Um, as far as plumbing, I do want to show you that beautiful two-tone faucet because I haven't shown a two-tone faucet yet. So, this is my Brizo. Um, so, I don't know if you can see this beautiful knurling here. Um, and then it's also on the handle as well. So this faucet is stunning. You could even put this in a farmhouse modern home if you wanted to. It does have a pull out spray. Um, if you have an island, I definitely think that you need to have a faucet that is a showpiece. That is my number one pet peeve. Um, for the bathroom faucet, this is also a signature hardware faucet. One of my favorites that they have in that collection, this is that matte black finish. It has a nice, sleek design. Um, it's just show-stopping to me. I think this is, you know, everything. I love that design. As far as the lighting, um, this light right here is by Hudson Valley. And this is like screams mid-century modern. And it is stunning. And I'll go show you another one by Park Harbor because that is my, one of my favorite lighting brands. <clears throat> Walkaways. So mid-century modern is a lot of that white globe look as well. So someone that doesn't like that exposed bulb, maybe this is where you would show them some of these fixtures, okay? Because it's not as harsh. So this fixture here um, is the fun mid-century modern look. This looks awesome over a dining room table. I've put this over freestanding tubs. Um, I really love this picture. You can put it over an island. So there's all sorts of things you can do. 
as far as outdoor lighting, because I feel like sometimes that gets left off with a mid-century home. Um, and again, I'm going to touch on the LED integrated lighting. Okay, so these are the options and the design styles that I have for you guys. I will share my screen again and show you an example of a mid-century modern home that we have done here in Knoxville. Um, that is the exterior. Um, this is a beautiful home. It's like close to the river, kind of close to Holston Hills. Um, but this home was really fun to work on. Okay. And that is all I have for you guys. Um, if you have any questions, please let right. me know. I want to thank you guys for um, hanging with Amanda. That was a lot of data. I felt like we just got a tour of the whole showroom. It was really fun. Thank you, Amanda. Um, I do want to ask you a question if you're still on the microphone. Uh, what did you bring as a door prize for us today for our listeners? Ooh. Can you guys hear me? I can't hear anything. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, yeah. we can hear you. Okay, Ooh, I can hear you. My computer was cutting out. Okay. What, what was your you, question? What did you bring as a door prize for us today? Oh, my door prize is a $250 gift card to <clears throat> Ferguson. Awesome. <laughs> That's so, great. That's the one you want. That's the one you want. All right. So $250, you have to be present to win. So don't go away. And remember that you also have a chance to ask the experts about your questions during the presentation. You just use your chat screen. It's pretty simple. Uh, and then type it in and we will get to that as we do our Q&A at the end. Right after that, we're going to do our drawings. And so stick, stick with us. Jennifer Bailey is up next and Jennifer is going to be presenting from Tile Sensations showroom. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Great. We're excited to see what you have for us. Well, um, I'm going to test a few things here. And um, I wanted to let you all know that I'm also in my store at Tile Sensations. Um, and so if you hear the phone ringing, we're not open yet. So there's nobody here to answer it. But we are open <laughs> because, as everybody knows, the building industry has been deemed essential. So Tile Sensations is open for business. We're offering personal shopping appointments and um, we open today 11 to 3, but if you hear the phone or there's a little noise in the background, just, just forgive because um, we can't help it. It's a retail store. So right now, can you guys see the PowerPoint presentation, the Resist the Ordinary? <clears throat> um, so I just want to make sure that you can see that and um, we're going to get started. So I've not done this Zoom presentation before, so if you'll bear with me. I'm gonna try not to just read you what's on the screens because I know that that happens sometimes and well, you guys can read, I'm pretty sure. So let's, looking at this, this is an idea of a floor plan we did for someone that we changed the entire floor plan. Those little dots on top are the lighting, the, um, we opened up rooms to make space for the kitchen and, and an open floor plan for this customer. What was important to this, this particular client was entertaining. So the dining space and the kitchen and the family room were all very close together. Um, and then he also wanted a, a private office. So when we took this house, we changed it completely. So as you're looking around your house, as you're sort of stuck here in, um, in your homes, what could you improve upon? What, um, do you want a bigger kitchen? Do you want a smaller kitchen? Um, do you want a bigger outdoor space? Do you want, what, a, what about your house would you change? Do you wish you had better, you know, do you wish that you had better storage or maybe more just functional storage? These are all things that you should be asking yourself as you're in your house. Because, you know, when we go back to our crazy lives, you aren't really going to have time for that. Um, and if you're sitting there making lists now, when you're ready to do projects in the future, you'll be able to do that. 
So some questions I'd like you to ask yourself, and yeah, I'm gonna read a little bit of this, this slide, but so what project should you start with? Um, some people wanna dive right in and do the whole house. Some people want to um, just start with a little project. And if you don't already have a relationship with a contractor, maybe you do wanna start with just remodeling a bathroom or just remodeling a small area, an outdoor area, so that you can create that relationship so that when you dive into a much bigger project, you already have that relationship going. Um, I would also say that um, who are you building or remodeling for? So the question is, are you doing it for yourself? Are you doing it to resale it? Or is it maybe a little bit of both? Like, so if you're gonna do it for resale, who, who are you gonna sell it for to? So don't think about yourself when you're remodeling for resale. Like totally don't think about yourself. What I suggest you do is think about the person that's going to buy the house. So if you have a, a neighborhood that's transitioning, it's kind of important to think about the young person that might be buying your house if you're getting ready to move and, re and retire into a smaller house. So always ask yourself before you start a remodel, who are you doing it for and how can you get the most bang for your buck? So if you're not really sure, just be sure to choose classic features, um, classic products, but don't be boring. You know, if you have the same tile or the same fixtures or the same lighting as your neighbor, um, then when it comes time to sell, the only thing that's gonna be different between the two houses is the price point. So if you use quality materials and you use quality um, contractor and you, everything about it is done well, then your house is gonna be more desired than the one down the street that has everything from a big box store. So, um, you know, is this a DIY project or will you hire a contractor? Well, we have a lot of DIYers and, and I think that's a great thing if you have attention to detail. Um, I always say that if you're an engineer or an accountant or have that type of personality, you will do a great job installing tile. You'll do a great job because you'll follow every little rule and you'll be sure to install to tile council guidelines. But if you're a salesperson or you need immediate gratification, tiling is not something you should do for yourself and you should definitely hire somebody to do that for you. So when you're thinking about whether you're gonna do a project or not, think about your personality style and will you rush it in the end and kind of compromise what happens. So the last question on this slide is, would, would hiring a designer be beneficial? And I think so. Now I'm a designer, so maybe that's part of the reason why I think so, but what designers do for you? Um, they help you plan, they streamline the project, they can help you run the project if you so choose, or they can just get you ready all the way up to the starting line and then you can let, they can let you go to the contractor. Um, they can communicate with subs for you. They can be at the job site when you're picking your kids up from school. Uh, and when something unexpected happens, for example, we have a project in Holston Hills right now where we had planned for lights over the window in the kitchen and once we tore the wall down, there was no way to put those lights there. So what did we do? We ran over and we had to make a new plan and a quick change. Um, because if we wanted to put the lights there, it would have been very expensive um, because of the way that the structure of the house. So having a designer to kind of on call and ready to come over and help you with those decisions you know, is a really uh, important thing. So, I'm gonna ask you to create a plan and a budget before you start anything. And when you're doing that, make sure you're paying attention to detail. So you need to know what things cost. So for example, um, I'm gonna grab a couple things behind me. But this is subway top. So everybody wants subway towel right now and everybody asks about it when they walk in and probably only 10% of the people that leave here actually end up with subway tile because there's so much more. But you could do this subway tile, um, which has uneven edges and kind of has a handmade feel to it. 
or you can do this subway tile. So this one is gonna be very streamlined. Um, this is probably the least expensive type of subway tile. But the character that something like this gives you, is, it's just night and day, just, just completely different. And then if you like that more modern feel, but you want a little nicer quality subway tile than the least expensive one, you're gonna get one with, uh, if you could feel this, this one you just kinda wanna lay on. It's, it's really beautiful. Um, so just, just think about it when you're choosing a product. You may walk in and say, I want subway tile, but here in the store, we probably have 80 different subway tile styles from handmade to mass manufactured, tile with wavy edges, tile with straight edges, elongated subway tile, oversized subway tile. There's so many choices. So just have an open mind because um, when you leave, you probably won't leave with what you thought you were going to. So think about your materials for sure. Um, Let's see. So I would say that you, you want to look at how all the projects are going to work together. So what color cabinet are you going to do? What paint? What? Don't try to jump ahead and do one part of the project and then go back and do another because inevitably if we do a lighting plan for what we're planning today and right down the road something else changes in our planning process, you're going to do it again. So be careful about planning and budgeting. And a lot of contractors are really happy if everything's in your garage before they start. So consider the idea that you want to get things ordered and in or ready for delivery in plenty of time. And in the tile industry right now, everybody's shipping, everybody's open, everything like that is great. But what I'm anticipating in the fall is a little bit of depletion of stock because as we move through projects during this COVID-19 problem, new pallets and new shipping is not coming in as quickly as it would have normally. So we're gonna have a little bit of low stock. It hasn't happened yet, but if you're looking for a fall project, you should be out now shopping so that you can secure the things that you need for your, for your project. And I'm gonna say make lists. Lists, lists, lists. Make a list for the areas you wanna improve, you know, even if the project's down the road, make the list now, watch the quality of materials. And you know, Ferguson is fantastic. Um, if you go to a big box store, and this is my understanding, and Amanda, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong. But if you go to a big box store and you pick up a Delta faucet, or you purchase a Delta faucet from Ferguson's, it is not the same thing, even though it looks the same. So, just like tile, if you buy tile at a big box store or you buy tile from a real tile store, the quality of the clay body, the quality of the glaze, the quality of the finishes are going to be different at a real tile store versus a big box store. So you wanna be careful that you're getting really good quality material. Um, I can talk forever about clay bodies and glazes and firing temperatures, but I'm, I'm not gonna bore you with that. Um, so just be aware of what you're buying and make sure your budget budgeting enough for what it is that you really want. So this is an example of how a designer can really help you. The picture with the corner tub was a Fountain City house. It was a bathroom in a Fountain City house and that was the layout when we arrived there. So it had the big corner tub and a big mural behind it and the clients wanted a updated style. They needed a, they needed a bigger shower. The shower in that picture with the corner tub is that the lower right corner of that picture, it was where their shower was. And when you got in there, you felt like you were in this little cave. It probably was two and a half feet by three feet. It was just tiny. And the homeowners, when they called us in, they sort of envisioned us just making the shower bigger in the space that it was. But we asked them to give us a little bit of time. We brought the measurements back. And what they ended up with was the bathroom that's on the right. So the bathroom on the right has that huge shower with a window in it. It's beautiful. Um, it has a freestanding tub. They have more storage than the other, the, than the original layout. And all over this bathroom just functions so much better. So 
a designer can help you see something in your own space that you couldn't see. Um, because you've lived with it that way for so long, it's hard to get out of the box. So, you know, just consider that when you're, when you're reaching out to professionals, that they might have ideas that you just never thought of. So we are doing virtual shopping um, because a lot of people don't want to leave their homes even though we are open. So in virtual shopping, this is an example of a virtual shopping we did this week. So the first picture where you see the front door, they had water damage. And if you look really close at that picture, you will see that uh, the flooring is up. They had damage to the front door, they have damage to the subfloor, they have damage to the flooring. And so they wanted to replace just that front area where the damage is. They didn't want to go to the expense of replacing all their hard, hardwood because the damage is contained there. So they sent me probably 14 or 15 pictures from every angle, you know, one picture with their back to the door, one with a picture forward, pictures with their dogs in it. It was all sorts of things. And then they sent me really good measurements. And then they came and they dropped at the door without coming in a piece of the wood that, that so I could see color. And they, they went away and two or three days later, we had a, a FaceTime appointment. And the things in the second picture are what we reviewed. So we had, three ideas for them um, and different products. And we were able to touch and, and do that through FaceTime and show them how it would, in, in different lights, how it would reflect and, and that type of thing. And then the third picture was an idea, the idea that they decided on, which is the foyer will have a small frame. They'll fill it with something pretty. Um, and so that when you step in their front door, you sort of have an automatic rug and the last picture is one of the samples we bagged up, so the ones they decided they really liked, and that will be here ready for them to pick up whenever, whenever they want to run by. If they can't run by and they're nearby, we'll bring it to them, but that's, that's an example of virtual shopping. Now, we've been doing virtual shopping for a long time. Um, last year, we did a, an entire project in San Francisco and never went to California for it. Um, it was a commercial project with um, shops downstairs, and we had re uh, residences upstairs. We even did the exterior of the building. We provided all the tile for that, and we never left here. We did all of it during do, do a FaceTime, and when we finalized what it was that they wanted, we boxed that up into a so UPS box and sent it out to make sure that the customer wanted to touch and feel it. Because you guys can shop online all day long, but if you can't touch it, if you can't feel it, what, um, what good is that? You know, it's gonna feel. When you're touching tiles specifically, sometimes the weight of it, the finish, all of those things really matter. So I've got two tiles here. <clears throat> Neither of these are made by God. So this is a, I, I wanna be marble but I'm on a, a ceramic clay body. And hey, everybody, ceramic is not a bad thing for walls. So when you hear that something is a ceramic clay body, it's not bad. Um, we've been using ceramic tile on walls for gosh, thousands of years. It's just not as dense a clay body. So I wouldn't use that type of clay on the floor. But here's one that's also man-made to look like God made, and it's on a porcelain clay body. <clears throat> this one is fired so hot that the clay body and the glaze become one. And I would really challenge anybody to try to figure a way to chip that. So if you're looking for a natural look, um, I suggest that you, and it's for the floor, I suggest that you go with the porcelain if you're not gonna go with the real thing. Now, in these types of tiles, you have to watch out too, because each box is gonna have a certain number of faces. The higher the quality, the more faces. So we have some companies that will have up to 70 faces and we'll have some companies that have 12. Well, if they only have 12, you're gonna see that same repeat from, um, from tile to tile. And unless you're very clever and you can remember to move them, then it's gonna be obvious that you didn't use the real God made. Um, and I'm gonna show you what this client thinks they're leaning towards. So we'll go back to the, to the screen. This is the sample they've decided 
they think they want. They should be picking it up tomorrow to make sure, um, and they're taking a couple other home too, but this is a beautiful water jet. Um, and what that means is they took real marble, the manufacturer took real marble, and with a fine, high powered water, they cut these pieces so they would fit together just as tightly as possible. It makes a beautiful mosaic. It is natural stone, but it is fantastic and perfect for the floor. Nothing to be afraid of. So if you need to virtual shop, we can do it with you. But if you want to come in, just let us know and we, we just ask that you make an appointment. So my thoughts at this point are make sure you plan. Make sure that you get some expert advice. You totally need it because, that sounded really bad, um, but everybody that's doing a project um, has something they haven't thought of and getting expert advice can be really helpful there. Try to make appointments because you'll get our best attention if you have an appointment. Be sure to resist the ordinary. And then always, if you don't mind, go and post online reviews. Pretty much the Better Business Bureau isn't used all that much anymore. But if you'll post online reviews, then people can know the great experiences or the difficult experiences that, that we've had. So since now we've gone through my PowerPoint, so you're gonna get, get me back. And I've got some stuff to show you. Um, got a project I'm working on right now, and Ferguson's was so just awesome to lend me this beautiful black mat that I'm gonna use in that house. Um, and that's another thing that's so great about working with a small, um, well, Ferguson's is giant, but a showroom that's like a family. So they're willing to, to allow us to utilize their showroom to make your project better. I also want to tell you about an area of, of Tile Sensations showroom. So about six months ago, we were discussing about how much we love handmade Knoxville made items. And um, so we decided to give these makers a part of our store. So in our store, we have really cute linens. We have little hand carved spoons, all made in Knoxville. I hope you guys can see these, but these are little garden spoons that say, I don't remember planning this, or I'm rooting for you. And so we really want to support our local makers. So when you come in the store, even if you don't want tile, um, we, we have what you need. We've got, whoops, there's a pair of gloves in case you come shopping. We have pottery, we have um, tie-dye linens, all sorts of fun locally made things. I'm gonna show you, this is my favorite right now. This is a door knocker that is locally made um, here in Knoxville. And so if you're looking for gift items and you, in this very important time of supporting local artists, remember that they don't get to do their um, Saturday markets on Market Square. They don't get to do any of those kind of things. We, we'd love it if you'd come here and look at their materials and, or we can, we can shop with you online for that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I've got other things to show you, but I think I'm out of time. Ah, Jennifer, I have a question for you. Question away. What did you bring us as a door prize? Oh, easy question. So Tile Sensations is, um, loves wallpaper. We oh. love wallpaper and we carry wallpaper. So here's some examples of wallpaper. So we're going to do our first door prize is a hundred dollar gift card towards the wallpaper of your choice. And we have so many books to choose from. Yeah, I can't even tell you. Um, so a hundred dollar gift card towards wallpaper, or we're gonna do a $275 gift card towards interior design service. So that wow. would be two hours of design time and three hours of SketchUp. So if you don't know what SketchUp is, it's a 3D modeling system. So if you are gonna remodel your kitchen and you wanna see it 3D, We'll put it in there 3D, we'll add your paint colors, we'll color, color you know, if you're using Kohler fixtures or Brizo, we can add the exact faucets that you're using. Um, so you get three hours of that time and two hours of design. Um, and that will be complimentary and has a $275 value. 
Wow. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. You're welcome. I told you, she's amazing. Uh, <laughs> you lost your mind. No. And Mastery Modelers is also going to be sharing a $250 design fee and uh, at no charge. And if you want to invite Jennifer's team and our team together, that would be a great idea. And I'll oh, tell you why. Because together. Yeah. We love working together. And also, um, we have different viewpoints. And that's a good thing. It doesn't make us wrong or Jennifer wrong. It makes us collaborative partners that come together for just a great design and a great experience. So Jennifer is just everything you think she might be. She is. She's amazing. And I love working with her. All right. So um, I'm John Steimer and I am a general contractor. This is our first Kitchen and Bath University online presented by Mastery Modelers. Ferguson showrooms and tile sensations. And I'm looking forward to talking with you about a general contractor. Well, the general contractor, yeah, a girl, 22 years, and it's fun, right? But all of a sudden, we're all too familiar with this word. This word about uh, quarantine. We, it stirs up emotions. We can't even imagine all the things that it stirs up. And I didn't even realize it until I got quiet a little bit. And I realized that these days of working at home and staying at home um, are just making a grocery run gets to be exciting. Now, that's really interesting for me because that is not the case. You know, the other thing I think about is, is our favorite restaurant going to survive? And if I get enough carry out, will that help them? And you know, gee, who's doing carry out? So how is your family doing? How is your home managing during these times? You know, I think it's more important than ever that we're concerned with who we invite into our homes. And that's what's interesting about working with these local companies. They've been in business for such a long time that we all have vetted the people that we use. And we know if they're, they've done some extra things for COVID-19. We know if they're going to provide gloves for you or if our people are going to provide gloves for you. Um, you know, it's important to know who's licensed, who's not, who's going to be available, who's not. And gee, can I trust them in my home? These are more important than ever because we're, tr we're trusting someone with our health now beyond just our, our material things, but our actual health. And how big is that? What if you offer... Um, a referral or get a referral from a friend of a friend and they're a handyman. Is that the person that you want to trust in your home? Well, that's why we have local businesses. That's why we have uh, connections with people uh, and have had those connections for years and years and years. We understand. I understand. I'm the one that comes out to the house. You may want, if you're like me, I've been sitting a lot and thinking about things and I've realized there are some things that I really need to do in this house. It's 22 years old. It's 21 years old. We've been in business for 22 years and I don't always pay attention to my home because I'm running around taking care of everybody else's and that's okay. But um, I have done some things and ordered some new things and I'm getting ready to start projects. And if you're doing that, all you have to do is make a phone call. You can call uh, Tile Sensations. You can call Mastery Modelers, uh, we are doing home visits as well. We do initial visits. We have already done some. Uh, we also do uh, virtual visits with the designer so we can invite Jennifer and her team into the uh, Zoom meeting. And we can, you can start the process from the safety of your home. How cool is that? And we make it easy. You don't have to be operating Zoom. We can help you with that. Um, you know, I've noticed that we've been getting some calls for outdoor kitchens. Now, this is a space that was obviously covered before and was remodeled. Um, they can offer lots of extra enjoyment, more space for your family, a place for you to gather and have social events. Uh, I'm going to point out some of the things here that are done for good reasons. There's a tile floor instead of the concrete floor. Much easier to keep clean, much more attractive. This is kind of a terracotta or a... Uh, more of a, a Latin tile, possibly from Mexico. Um, and you're going to see some can lights. There was a question online about can lights and what kind. And, you know, that depends on the use. I will tell you, LED is my favorite. 
I like the can lights that are in a cartridge and you just plug them in. You don't have to have a real deep dish um, space for that can light to fit into anymore. And I'll tell you a secret about LED lights. What attracts bugs is heat. What LED lights don't do is produce much heat. So these LED lights out here are not going to attract bugs. How cool is that? And you can also see the fan, very important. Another big deal with an outdoor kitchen. They've decided to use an outdoor kitchen and table, uh, table and chairs. So I like the countertop going around the side. It's a little bit different than some of the outdoor kitchens that we have done. On the left, you're going to see a refrigerator and above it looks like a margarita machine. Uh, I think I'm ready for that. <laughs> and then some drawers, some deep drawers that are all stainless steel. Now this whole countertop had to be built uh, separately from the individual stainless steel cabinetry. So it had to be built to the right height, to the right specifications. Everything had to be roughed in behind it, including electrical, plumbing. Then we had to have structure to hold both the cabinetry and the countertops. Then we have, you see a raised bar here. Now this is probably a short bar, but you could do an overhang and have other people grazing around and snacks and things and drinks from outside. As you go further in, you'll see cabinetry, you'll see the sink and the high faucet, you'll see the range that's presently covered with a stainless steel lid, and you'll see the grill, uh, which is usually the star of the show. To the right of that, you'll see another refrigerator. And I really like that because it keeps the cold things cold and the chef or the grill master is able to handle things while you're still getting your drinks and your beverages and your snacks. So that is kind of a, a fun way to create more space for your family throughout the year. The main thing I want you to get from the things that I'm talking about today is a general contractor is like a conductor. We know who to call for what, we know when to do what, we know what has to be pulled out, what has to be left behind in remodeling. We know what to expect most of the time from what's behind the house or behind the walls or be under the floor. Um, I'll give you an example. As a general contractor, we just moved a bedroom into a master suite, a master bathroom. And the bedroom that we did have happens to be above a garage. Um, and so when we opened it up, we were going to put slab showers, uh, granite slabs in, and a tub. And we realized a couple things. First of all, that the structure of the 1970s home was not sufficient to support a 500 each slab. Um, so we had to reinforce that. We got a structural engineer out quickly and reinforce that. Then we realized that there was a uh, particle board subfloor, which is possible in an older home. And we had to replace that with a more modern, more engineered floor that is resistant to water. Uh, then from there, we realized that there was no insulation. So whoever slept in that bedroom was freezing at times. <laughs> I have no doubt. But we weren't going to put a, a tile floor in there and not insulate that. That's what a general contractor brings to the table. We notice those things and arrange those things in a way that the project keeps moving, but those things get done. Now, sometimes if we didn't know that, you may end up with a change order for that, but that's okay uh, because that is not something that we upcharge uh, ridiculously like some people do. Um, but basically a conductor uh, leads and guides various musicians who are skilled professionals and a general contractor leads and guides subcontractors on the job, calls for deliveries, calls for trash hauling, sets up a portalette, makes sure that the roughing is correct, that the finish is correct. All of those details are done by the general contractor and we bring all that together like a crescendo for the end when we actually do a professional cleanup. This homeowner wanted a spa look and feel to their bathroom. Now, some of you know that we just released a book called Age in Place, a remodeling workbook. You can get it on Amazon, but the reason I bring that up is this is a bathroom that is like a spa, and it has been prepared for the most part for aging in place. And what I mean by that is there, yes, there's a bathtub. That is probably the least age in place thing in this 
room until you add something called Invisia benching uh, in the future. She can add a bench that's made to look like a teal bench that fits on the edges of that tub and she can sit and pivot her feet into the tub. Um, also, what you don't know is that there's grab bars. Not, they're not there yet, but there are bracing for grab bars both around the tub and into the shower, which is to your right. There's a couple things in the shower I want to point out to you. It is a large format tile on the floor. And if you look carefully, you'll see that the tile on the floor matches the height of the tile in the shower. That's what we call a no or zero threshold shower. And that makes it an age in place shower. It also has a very wide door, two glass walls, which is not necessary, but certainly lends to the beauty of the tile. Um, and then we have an overhead rain head. And unfortunately it's hidden by the plant, but there is a handheld also in that shower. To the right of the rain head down a little bit, you'll see a niche that's for holding the uh, soaps and shampoos and things. And to the right of that, you'll actually see something that looks like a, a chrome box. And what that is, is a valve control between the shower head and the handheld. And the reason it's over there across the room, well, because if you walk into that shower and have to reach over underneath that rain head to turn on that shower, guess what? You're going to get cold. <laughs> You're going to get cold water for a little while. And we didn't want to do that. So I think the designer in this case nailed the spa look in this bathroom and secretly it's age in place. So when and if anyone needs an assist bar, we have some beautiful ones that are custom designed that we, we carry exclusively in Knoxville and you'll never even probably think they're assist bars. They look more like towel bars. Now going to the other side of the room in this spa like bath, you'll see the suspended cabinet. This is fully suspended from wall to wall and there's an open space below. Now I like what the homeowner did here. Uh, she wanted polished rocks and we said, well, you know, we can put them there, but you're not gonna see them unless we throw some light in there. So we use some under cabinet lights or under vanity lights uh, to light that space and highlight that accent. I hope you think it's as pretty as I do. Uh, the vessel sinks above are very nice, they're low profile. The handles that are on these cabinets are age in place as well. And you can see that none of this looks like age in place. There are single lever faucets that are like a waterfall faucet. Um, and it's just a beautiful bathroom that they will love for years to come. All right, let's transition a little bit to a kitchen. Um, this is one of the kitchens that we finished recently. I did not bring our farmhouse kitchen because Amanda did a great job of showing you that. This is a little more transitional kitchen. It has a nice clean line. She chose a light gray cabinet with a flat panel um, and just has the, the typical frame around it. But what I want you to notice is there's a single bowl sink in here. There's a single lever, lever faucet. It's all placed perfectly in front of the window. We did backsplash. Now she did subway tile from Tile Sensations, lovely, and all the uh, fixtures are from Ferguson. Um, you'll also notice that there's under cabinet lighting. That is a huge deal. There's all kinds of under cabinet lighting. There was an online question about that and I wanted to go ahead and answer that while we're here. Under cabinet lighting can be different ways. It can be fluorescent, it can be, uh, um, LED, but whatever you do, I like to reduce the, op the opportunity for heat in the kitchen. I think there's enough heat in the kitchen anyway. And how you do that is by using LED lighting. We don't typically put them towards the back of the cabinet. We put it about in the middle or towards the front because it lights the whole working surface. And that's extremely important in a kitchen for safety, as well as you might get a few extra pies out of the deal. <laughs> so, um, also notice the LVP, the luxury vinyl plank that you see here. This is not wood, although it does look like wood. And when you're standing on it, it actually feels like wood, which is surprising. Uh, it is waterproof. It has a lifetime warranty. And the best part for this client is she had uh, a regular tile, but she had some mobility issues and her hips bother her a lot. So this particular LVP tile, luxury vinyl plank, 
has a pad underneath it and it makes her very comfortable. I want to read you a quote that she gave us uh, when we finished her kitchen. She said, I can enjoy cooking again since my feet don't hurt from working in the kitchen. That's great. That's what we want to hear. Her other comment was also, I wouldn't change a thing. And, and that's really important. That's good design. That's good craftsmanship and workmanship. Now, this highlights some handmade tile uh, from Jennifer Neal's Tile Sensations. This tile is gorgeous. I wish we could have captured it even more by photos, but it's just a, an inset. This is kind of resisting the ordinary because it is an unusual pattern, but it's very pretty and she loves it. It's one of the highlights of the kitchen. You'll also notice that the microwave is no longer over the range. Uh, we tried to keep the microwaves away from being above the range because what happens is um, people are having trouble handling things. They're heavy, they're hot. It just creates a difficult situation. And one of the things I love about this range is it's considered on a semi-built-in. It has a lip that goes over the top of the uh, granite top. And so you don't have that crack. I don't know about you, but I'm cleaning that thing all the time and I don't like it very much. Um, so that's very nice as far as keeping clean. You can see the under cabinet lights are still there. That's a fully vented hood with a lot of light and controls. Um, also, the cabinetry is very simple and the pulls on the cabinetry are age in place as well. None of this has to look like an age in place issue. It just has to be pretty and functional. The deep drawers below the utility drawers allow her to have pots and pans on one side of the range and serving dishes on the other. Um, it's just a great functional kitchen and uh, we're just happy to be a part of such a great design and such a fun client. Um, you know, it's spring in East Tennessee and it's time to get outside, enjoy the dogwood trees, fire up your grill, make the most of the extra time you have with your family. Um, we are going to open this up for some questions. These are your providers for the, the, um, present, the presenters for today. And I'm going to hand this over to my partner in crime. No, <laughs> Vince Thompson. He could be crap. Uh, but he's going to take over and we're going to get some questions out to the experts. The first question we had come in was from Larry. And I think Don has already addressed that some under cabinet lighting options. Uh, looks like Amanda stepped away from her computer. Do you want to cover that a little more, Don? Sure. Um, you can use halogen lights. Can you mute yourself for just a second? All right. You can use halogen lights, um, under cabinet lights. I like to have them directly wired into behind my backsplash rather than having cords hanging out. But you have to think about that in advance and you have to set that up. Um, you can use fluorescents, although they're not real popular, or you can use LEDs. Uh, of course, LEDs last a long time. They come in colors. If your cabinet is white, you probably want to put a white body uh, up there so that they're not visible. Um, I will tell you with halogens, if you want to close off the bottom of your cabinet, which some people do, most people don't, you can't do that with a halogen under cabinet light because it'll cause it to be too warm and then it shuts off. So I hope that's answering your questions. You can go to Remodeling Knoxville and send in your question if you have more for that. All right, the, uh, the next question we had was, with a zero threshold shower, how in the world do you keep the water in the shower and off the bathroom floor? That's uh, why you have a professional do it. Exactly. <laughs> so there are materials, um, it, it, it's all in the planning. Let's start with that, it's all in the planning because the idea is that the slope is so slight that it won't disturb you if you're walking into the shower, but it's slight enough that the water will run towards the drain. And um, sometimes it's a linear drain, sometimes it's not, but it's all in the prep work and the really cool thing about it is you don't have to use a tiny tile on your shower floor when you're doing a zero threshold. So if you want your bathroom to feel a little bigger, you have that zero threshold, and then you can take your large floor tiles right into the shower. Um, so it's all in execution. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <clears throat> all right, Amanda, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, Don already talked about this a little bit, but we had a question about uh, under cabinet lighting options. Can you cover that a little more for us? Yes. So almost everything we have now is LED under cabinet lighting. So you have options there where you can have a module under each cabinet. So you could switch it on and off at each fixture. Um, you have the option of doing tape, it, which would be a little bit thinner, um, and that would go right under your cabinet. It really just depends on the aesthetic of what that cabinet looks like. If you have a very sleek cabinet, tape is going to be your best option. And we would put in a, what we call a sleeve, um, and that's how you would do that. Just like on the, I don't know if you guys remember seeing the waterfall um, island that I was sitting out and I showed you guys for the contemporary kitchen. We have lighting underneath the knee space where you would actually sit at the bar. This is just a nice tape that we have put there that is not visible at all. It just looks like it's illuminated. So I think it just depends on if you have like a lip on your cabinet and you can cover it. Um, also, you gotta think about wiring too, right? So you have to have a different wire for tape versus if we were just doing that the modules. Um, so that needs to be something that you would talk with your contractor about and the electrician and on the electrical walkthrough. So when you are doing cabinet lighting, we would need your final cabinet layout to actually know how much tape you would need if you were needing tape, if you would have interconnects and things like that. So there's, it's definitely possible, it's easy to do. We just need to know the dimensions and the aesthetic that you're going for. Um, also color temperature too is a huge thing. So say that Jennifer puts this beautiful white backsplash and then you have a warm white yellow you know, temperature under cabinet light, it looks terrible. So you need more of it like a 3000 Kelvin light that would go there. So there are different variations. Again, this is where you would have a designer where they think about these things constantly. Um, and then you would have some, you know, you would ask me and things like that. So under cabinet lighting is great. Um, I mean, your kitchen just really lightens up and just shines when you have under cabinet lighting and it's functional, it's extremely functional. So I hope that answers any questions. Yeah, there was a, there was a follow-up to that question, wanting to know if you have Legrand under cabinet lighting products in stock. Um, we can have it in a few days. So right. even if we don't have it in stock, they ship pretty quickly. Okay, all right. The next question, can we do a zero threshold shower in the space where a bathtub used to be or does it need to be enlarged or made bigger? So there is a product um, that is out now that when you take away um, the shower, you can put this in in place and you don't even need to um, mess with your floor joists. Uh, it's, it's new, we've only used it in three or four different homes, but technically you can. My preference is that you go further into the room, the three feet is pretty tight. Um, but it can be done because there's a preformed kit for that. Okay, that's all of our questions for now. Okay. Uh, so what time is it, Vince? It's time to draw for the door prizes. Yeah! Let's go. Everybody here is eligible. Here we go. All Let's right. Uh, which is our first door prize? Is that from Ferguson? Yeah. All right. The first door prize we've drawn, the name is, oh my gosh, <laughs> it is Heather Means. Yay! <laughs> so you get $250 to Ferguson. Woo! <laughs> That's awesome. Heather is going through a remodel of her entire main level of her floor, and she's about to get her kitchen back. So this is perfect timing. Yeah, this is great for you. <laughs> All right. Our Yay, second Heather. Second prize. Uh, and Tim, you have to let me know if uh, they are online. Uh, Karen Kachuk. Karen Kachuk. I don't see Karen. All right, we don't see Karen. Moving on to the next one. All right. Oh, wait. Karen just messaged that she is here. Ah. There we go. All so right. She, so what's she, she win? What is our she second door prize? 
this the one from tiles the first one from tile sensations is the gift card for wallpaper hundred it's a hundred dollar gift card towards a wallpaper order all right Drum roll. Drum roll. <laughs> all right number three and what is our third door price it's going to be 275 dollar gift card for that includes two hours of design service and three hours of SketchUp. All right. Our third name is Gail Clendon. Gail Clendon. And if I'm butchering that last name, I apologize. <laughs> Gail, are you here? I see them on the screen, yes. Yay! All right, congratulations, Gail. All right, our next name, and this is for what? Our fourth door prize? Mm -hmm. That's us. That is us, all right. Mastery modelers. Mm -hmm. All right, this is coming out of the jug here. All right, this is Rich DeForest. Ah! <laughs> well, you wanted that kitchen. There all we right. go. <laughs> so we can couple that with Tile Sensations, designer coming out, and us coming out. And, or separately, it doesn't matter. And then what you get is our consultation, the drawing, and a ballpark figure for your project. All right, do we have one more or was that it? No, one more from us, one more? same thing. All right, the next one is Melissa Watson. Melissa Watson, are you still with us? Melissa Watson. <laughs> All right. I don't see Melissa. Melissa, throw it in the chat window real quick if you're still here. Yeah. So All right. Exciting. Looks like Melissa's gone. All right. Going to draw again for the last one. We have <laughs> Barbara Sanders. Barbara Sanders, are you still with us? I see a Barbara right here. Is that you, Barbara? Yeah. Hit chat. Throw it in the chat window if you're still with us, Barbara. <clears throat> All right. Barbara Hi. is here. All Yay. right. All right. That's, I believe that's all of our prizes. Is that right? That's right. All right. So we want to thank you for being here. We want to thank you for joining us. These are the contact information uh, numbers for the folks and the names of the folks that presented today. It has been delightful to be with you. Thank you for joining us as our uh, first ever Kitchen and Bath University Online. We look forward to seeing you in a video chat appointment very soon. Happy Saturday. <laughs>